Hi guys, it's Neil. So what's new? Someone sent me something here. Um, it is a product from Hengel called Renewsit Snuggle. I guess co-branded with the uh, fabric softener brand Snuggle, one of the Hengel brands that they acquired as part of the Unilever North America purchase, I believe, uh, a few years ago. Anyway, um, it's a plug-in air freshener and it says here, get the perks of laundry day without having to do any laundry with Renewsit Snuggle Linen Escape Oil. Now you can fill every room in your home with the inviting sense of clean laundry and fresh floral notes, no folding required. So, as I understand it, this to me um, actually, I think defines a new category. It is a virtual cleaning category, virtual cleaning category. What it is, is it's giving you as a homeowner, as the householder, the psychic benefits of cleaning without actually having to do any laundry. Um, you can impress yourself, you can impress visitors, uh, friends and family as they stop by with the smell of fresh laundry, uh, knowing uh, yourself that you have not actually done any laundry, um, but nonetheless have given the appearance of clean. So again, it's one of these things that I, I read occasionally, I think, well, I don't know. Is this it? Is this is this is this a harbinger of the end of our civilization, um, when all the benefits of cleanliness have been um, tossed to one side, or should I say, all the benefits but one have been tossed to one side? That one benefit being the self-satisfaction that you have upon knowing that you have um, um, done the laundry, or, or not even the self-satisfaction, maybe the the um, the ability to impress visitors and, uh, and and perhaps close neighbors that you have in fact done a incredible load of laundry in your house and everything smelling really nice and, and fresh and freshly laundered when in fact no such laundry has been done whatsoever but a small device has been plugged into one of your outlets and that calls to mind um, maybe there are other um, other products in this in this segment in this in this so-called virtual segment maybe there's the um, I don't know the 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 homework plug in this the fresh the fresh smell of uh, freshly cracked textbooks that you plug in to convince your um, your neighbors and, and visiting friends that uh, little Johnny is um, upstairs doing his homework when in fact he's uh, playing World of Warcraft or uh, watching TikTok videos. Um, there's the um, there's the plug-in smell of money to convey wealth. Um, perhaps there's the smell of freshly cut plywood to convey the fact uh, that, or convey the impression that uh, your husband is in there um, putting together um, a, a DIY project, you know, for the family when in fact no such project is underway. Um, the of course, the smell of baking, the smell of coffee, I guess these are all fairly well established, could all be added to the line. Um, maybe there are other types of virtual products available, the virtual sound of your uh, your gifted and talented child practicing his uh, Rachmaninoff third piano concerto in the basement, when in fact, again, he is um, on Instagram or some other time-wasting endeavor. And, uh, you know, the, the, the list is endless. Um, full credit to Hengel on this one. I think it's, um, it's interesting, um, but I'm still not quite sure what to make of it. Um, what else is new? Well, you could say, well, Neil, you know, these, these things are uh, of a piece with uh, fairly well-established uh, products. And uh, I look again at the, uh, the Hengel product line here in the uh, Renews It category. They have a, a product called a wild, it's a cone, it's a, it's a cone that um, emits fragrance. They have a product called Wildflower Dream and it says transform your home into an airy alpine meadow of jasmine, violet and orange flower. The Wildflower Dream air freshener cone brings the sweetest aromas into your home and its small spaces. So again, um, I don't think you're kidding anyone, but nonetheless giving the impression that you are in a airy alpine meadow rather than your um, overcrow overcrowded condo that you're desperately trying to get out of, saving enough money to buy a house. Um, all right, anyway, that's that. That's what's new. Um, credit to Hengel actually on this. They are affiliated with Smart Label. You can click here, get all the ingredients, including 
uh, a fairly comprehensive list of the actual fragrance ingredients, uh, the aroma chemicals, which is pretty good. If you click on the, the fragrance category, you've got uh, triacetin, linalool, citronellol, eugenol, cyclamenaldehyde, etc., etc. There's uh, about uh, 20 of them here, so pretty good. Um, anyway, um, that's that on the product front. Okay, so I've been thinking about the situation which many of us may find ourselves in that of being stretched in a uh, large number of directions uh, as part of our job, whatever that job might be. And it, um, it calls to mind a book I read a couple of times over the past uh, couple of decades, and that is The Goal. It's a novel by Eli Goldratt. It's about a plant manager, Alex Rogo, who finds himself in charge of a manufacturing plant, part of a parent company, and the plant is uh, marginal in terms of its performance, and the parent company is looking to close it down. And so he finds himself getting uh, somewhat philosophical toward the beginning of the book, considering all the things for which he's responsible, um, production, purchasing, sales, marketing, R&D, all these activities uh, which are under his uh, control and the priorities and gets, gets to thinking, well, what is the goal? What is the purpose, the core purpose of this manufacturing plant? And um, uh, there's a scene on it when he's um, looking at the plant uh, from um, on, a, on a hillside and, and kind of drawing conclusions over a long period as he gazes down at his, uh, at his plant and his workers kind of doing their thing and uh, and so towards the end of this this um, uh, soliloquy if you like he, he uh, gets to this point I see it now I'm gonna read from the book because I think it's pretty cool I see it now the goal of a manufacturing organization is to make money why else did J Bartholomew Granby start his company back in 1881 and go to market with his improved coal stove? Was it for the love of appliances? Was it a magnanimous public gesture to bring warmth and comfort to millions? Heck no. Old J Bart did it to make a bundle and he succeeded because the stove was a gem of a product in its day. And then investors gave him more money so they could make a bundle and J Bart could make an even bigger bundle. But is making money the only goal? What are all these other things that I've been worrying about? I reach for my briefcase, take out a yellow pad, and take a pen from my coat pocket. Then I make a list of all the items people think of as being goals. Cost-effective purchasing, employing good people, high technology, producing products, producing quality products, selling quality products, capturing market share. I even add some others like communications and customer satisfaction. All of those are essential to running the business successfully. But do, what do they all do? They enable the company to make money. But they are not goals in themselves. They're just the means of achieving the goal. But how do I know for sure? Well, I don't, not absolutely. But adopting making money as the goal of a manufacturing organization looks like a pretty good assumption. Because for one thing, there isn't one item on that list that's worth a damn if the company isn't making money. Because what happens if a company doesn't make money? If the company doesn't make money by producing and selling products or by maintenance contracts or by selling some of its assets or some other means, the company is finished, it will cease to function. Money must be the goal, nothing else works in its place. Anyway, it's the one assumption I have to make. If the goal is to make money, then an action that moves us toward making money is productive and an action that takes us away from making money is non-productive. For the past year or more, the plant has been moving away from the goal more than toward it. So to save the plant, I have to make it productive. I have to make the plant make money for Unico. That's the parent. That's a simplified statement of what's happening, but it's accurate. At least it's a logical starting point. And then the, the novel goes on from there and he introduces a number of management concepts, which are pretty interesting, but for me, it's that short passage in the, the preceding part on the hillside that's the, the key part of the business. Um, it's something worth bearing in mind um, in amongst all the other things that are pulling for your attention, competing for your attention. These are all important, but they are important as means to the goal, not 
the goal in and of itself. Um, I think that's it for this week, uh, a brief a brief summary. Um, uh, just want to remind you that we have our conference coming up in May on um, surfactants. It is the 10th World Surfactant Conference and um, it's going to be uh, pretty darn good. I'm going to be uh, uh, putting out a few um, bulletins on what to expect, who to expect, and uh, some of the changes we've made to the program to make it a little bit extra special this year. So we're back in the same place in um, Jersey City. I'll see you guys there. I'm sure book early because it will sell out. Thanks, that's it for now.